new year new topics to explore and new men of substance as we enter into this period of newness we are calling all of our men far and near to join us in season two of Man Enough as we look forward to growing together. Season two of Man Enough. Don't miss it. And remember, you are Man Enough. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope that you're doing well. Hope that you're staying blessed. Yes, I know that today's session looks a little bit different than we normally have it, but that's because we are taking a new turn here on Man Enough. Man Enough to True Talk Live. As you can see, this gentleman right next to me, um, he is the host of, of True Talk Live. I'll allow him to introduce himself shortly, but we just wanna let you know that Man Enough is gonna take a little turn as we're going to be having little nuggets talking about theological issues. We're gonna talk about life issues as we want to educate our men, be educated on varying topics um, as we move forward in this ministry. So my name is Kadik Tittle, you know uh, me from Man Enough. I'm the Man Enough host and I'll allow my brother, my friend to introduce himself. Go right ahead. Well, um, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Tito. Uh, my name is Pastor Shepard. Well, Sean Shepard. Um, for those who are viewing True Talk, you will know me. And um, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be part of this discussion. Quickly, a little about me. I just love life. Just love to be jolly and happy and enjoy God every moment of every day. And just understand that uh, the life is so sweet that we need to be connected. And I'm so happy that you have visionary young people like yourself, Pastor Tito, who can, you know, just see uh, the vision, see a vision of, of reaching people and sharing the gospel without, without you know, uh, any strings attached or being free to do so. And I'm so glad to be here this evening. Yeah, and we're glad to have you as well. So you have two hosts speaking today. Um, so we're just going to have... <laughs> A free conversation. That's my brother. That's my friend. We went I to school together. Yeah, we went to school together and all of that. Same university. And I'm just glad that we are able to do ministry together. So um, today we're talking on Man Enough to True Talk Live, but we're going to be focusing on a sabbatical discussion. We're going to be like talking on, I don't know, Man Enough to talk about the Sabbath. Yeah, might have to talk about the yes, Sabbath. Yes, I mean, have to talk about the Sabbath. Why not? Why? Yeah, not? yeah. yeah. It, Why takes, not? it takes a lot of a lot of of gusto, you know, to talk about the Sabbath. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because as soon as you start talking about the Sabbath, people are just like you know. So we want to talk about it in a theological way, yeah, but in a practical way, so that all of us can follow and so that all of us can be edified today. And I mean, you have two Seventh Day Adventist Christians, two Seventh Day Adventist pastors. So for the first time, man enough to chew talk. What better topic to talk on than the Sabbath, you know? So we're going to be talking oh, on yes. um, um, Man Enough to talk about the Sabbath, True Talk Live vibes today. Um, but before you even get into the discussion, Pass, why did you become a Seventh-day Adventist Christian? I'm a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, you know. But why did you become a Seventh-day Adventist Christian? Honestly, um, I, I, just, I just found God. <laughs> oh, God found me because... Uh, um, my, my, my journey is one that um, many persons, I don't know, have the same experience, but I heard one sermon. I came a Friday night and I got baptized the Sabbath. So um, I, I didn't come to the Adventist church because of any doctrinal foundation. Oh, I heard about that and I heard about that. No, I just heard one sermon and that sermon spoke to me. <laughs> And I got baptized the very next day, and that was it. You know, God just captured me and, and held me there for, for so many years. I've been an Adventist for almost 16 years now, and um, going 17 years, and I, I have not regretted uh, that a single moment. So I, I really can't say I became a Seventh-day Adventist because of Bible doctrine, because of knowing the about the Sabbath, nothing. I became a Seventh-day Adventist because I met Jesus on that very sermon, and it really changed my life. 
for sure for sure i think my story is completely different than yours i was i was born a church boy i born raised <laughs> growing up in the seven adventist church all my life you know mother head superintendent father elder all of the rigors i i am the church boy um but i think you were yeah p- to the bone man to the bone <laughs> you were but, born as a man <laughs> yeah well i think i really accepted it um because of my parents you know my parents never forced me into it as many people would think that you were cultured in it so that's all you knew no my parents showed me the two truths um yeah. sunday what they believed and the sabbath um the sabbath truth and they told me choose you know, based on that knowledge and my understanding. And I chose, you know, I didn't feel any pressure. So I am thankful for good parents. Praise God. Praise God for that. But over the years, I've realized that there has been a a, a major issue. And I'm sure that you have realized that there's a major issue when it comes to the Sabbath. I don't know why, because the Bible is so plain when it comes to the Sabbath. Like, as I think about it from a practical level, Pass, God made this day holy, and he, he made this day to rest. He made this day to be a blessing in such a distinct manner in, in, in Genesis, in the creation. If it is that he was going to change the day, don't you think that he would have made it more like distinct, so plain as day that it was going to change and whatnot, just as he did when he orchestrated it in the first place? To me, it, it, it's just, I don't know. But today we're going to look at the Bible and what the Bible has to say um, concerning, concerning the Sabbath. And um, for the viewing audience, we would love for you to have your Bible with you as well so that you can follow. This is not our words. This is the word of God. This is not our word. So so let's turn to Genesis first. I think that's where it started, you know. It all Gen- started there. I, yeah. I, I mean, uh, foundational, foundational structure. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bible starts at Genesis. And, and if, if, the, if we can find the Sabbath in Genesis then I, I mean, there are a few things that you can find in Genesis that live past Genesis, live mm-hmm. past Genesis. And um, two of those few things are, 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 are marriage, marriage, the marriage institution, yeah. and also the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Um, many other things, sacrificial system and so forth, so on, change. But when it comes to those two institutions, it's to the test of time. So, yes, Genesis. I have my Bible, people. Look, the word yes, of God. Yes. Amen, okay, amen. Tattered. It means that it's been used a lot, you know. Amen. That's, <laughs> that's all right. You know, Genesis, Genesis uh, chapter 2. Uh huh. 2 and 3. And uh, verses 2 and 3. Mm-hmm. And it says, I, I will, well, we will do the interchanging of the text, right? Sure. Let's go. Okay. So, so it says, and on the seventh day ended his work, and he, uh, let me start from verse one. Yes. Okay. Thus the heavens and the earth was finished, and mm-hmm. all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Mm-hmm. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Uh, plain ABC. Come on. Yeah. If, if, if you need any other explanation that God rested on the seventh day. I mean, most of the time when you read that particular text, they say, okay, you know, it's creation. God rested. Mm-hmm. So what? But, but you know, we, we sometimes have to get a little in-depth to show persons the, the seriousness of the Sabbath. I, I, I think one of our biggest challenge is that we, the way we put forward the challenge, the, the, the Sabbath, the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. it's a law. Keep mm-hmm. it or else. Yeah. Um, yes, it is a law. But, but the, the act of what God intended by the law what, what was, was even deeper than just a day because understand what happens on that day every time you remember the sabbath day every time you you observe the sabbath day every time you're partaking in the sabbath day it is not you you know Mm -hmm. it is now turning attention to the god who created everything including that day and that's the beauty of the sabbath 
because mm-hmm. now you have a daily, a man for a weekly reminder who created you, mm-hmm. who established the heavens and the earth, who who tell the sea that you can go so far, who planted the trees so that they pop up like popcorn when he says come forth, yeah. who, who gave authority to water to give birth to mm-hmm. fish. <laughs> Did you not read that? It's in the Bible. <laughs> says fish come forth and water, <laughs> fish just start to come out of water. So it means that water give birth to fish. And ear <laughs> give birth to birds. Uh, uh, they, they just pop out of thin air. Yes, it, that's the power of God. And it tells on the Sabbath day. Uh, uh, no other day. All the other days he was working. Mm-hmm. Yeah? All the other days he put things in place. All mm-hmm. the other days, even to us, that day he was working for us. Mm-hmm. But on the Sabbath day, he came apart and he says, listen, I give you six, I'm taking one. Yay. And this one is, I will sanctify it. I will make it holy. I will put it as, as a structure whereby it, beca- it will become not only um, a, a foundational um, platform, but it also will become a lifestyle platform whereby you can be identified with me because it is a covenant on the Sabbath day between you and God. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, you, you're preaching now, Pass. Oh, Behave sorry, yourself. Sorry. We just so discuss it. You got to be passionate about the truth, fellow. You have to be <laughs> passionate, Pastor. You have to be passionate. Yes, yes, yes. You can do all to call now, man. But we discuss oh, yeah. it, Pass. Behave yourself. We discuss it. Right? All right. So, so then, this is so beautiful because based on what you have said, this day first culminated or, or, or was orchestrated for us to see God as creator. That's yes. the first, first establishment for the Sabbath, for us to see God as our creator, as the creator of this universe. So when you look at nature itself and the different seasons and how, how you know, the flowers would bloom at a particular time of the year, and all of that, you see God as a God of order. You see, you see, you see God through nature. Yes. But then the text says something very important, you know. God did three distinct things on this day that yes. he did not do on any other day. God rested on this day. Yes. God blessed the day. And God yes. sanctified the day. Pass, I, I don't know about you, but I appreciated, I didn't say love it, I appreciated the languages when we were in school. I appreciated them. All yes. right? they, they, <laughs> <laughs> I said that because... I know what you're talking about, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So as you look at the the, the, the Hebrew forms of, of, of these three words, um, he rested, Shabbat, where we get the Sabbath from, mm-hmm. you see that that word means to stop. It doesn't mean to sleep. So if you think that the Sabbath was made for, for you to distinctly just sleep through the day, nah. It, it means to stop, perfect cessation. You stop doing that which you normally do in the other six days. But you yes. stop. It wasn't that God was tired, you know. God no, no, no. just did he everything sees. that yes. needed to be done already. So he stops now. As an example to us now, reflect on what I have established. Reflect on me yeah. as creator. And then yeah. he didn't stop there. He blessed the day, Barak. You see, yeah. because the Sabbath was made to be a blessing. Come on now. The Sabbath was made yeah. to be a blessing. Stop preaching. Sorry. <laughs> the Sabbath was made to be a blessing. Preach the Bible tells us that. <laughs> In Mark 2, the Bible tells us that the Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for... That's us. a serious point. Man... Man, the Sabbath was made to be a blessing for all of us, you know? We weren't yeah. supposed to be lo- seeing the Sabbath as, you know, tired, like what the Pharisees were doing in the New Testament, to make it a burden. It was supposed to be this yeah. a blessing in just stopping to reflect on God. You get mental rest, emotional peace. You get physical rest and all of that. The Sabbath was made to be a blessing. And not only that, but he made the day holy. God is a holy God, so oh. only God can establish something to be holy. So who gives man the authority to establish now the first day to, to be change holy? It. Exactly. Definitely. Right. So Definitely. <laughs> Go ahead, Pass. I see. No, excited. No, let, 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 let me throw in something here in this bucket here now. Uh-huh. This, this bucket will be full to overflowing by the time we finish with it. Mercy. Uh, the, the, the Sabbath, the Hebrew language mm-hmm. is a language that is picturistic. Mm-hmm. It is it the, every every letter is it's a it's a shape of something. It has a picture. I, I, I came across some information that had me had me like, wow, you know, mm-hmm. like when you just found something that's so amazing. The, 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 the picture that the, the Sabbath, the seventh day, 
the, um, that, that, was, that was stated there in Hebrew, mm -hmm. the picture, the words, the three words that formed there, formed the, the Sabbath, that, those three images, one was a shield and one mm -hmm. was a sword. Yes. Yes. The picture that showed the two pictures was a shield uh -huh. and a sword. Yes. The Sabbath alone is not just a day of rest, but it's a day that was there to defend and also to, to, to bring victory, to, to destroy uh -huh. the enemy. Because, because the Sabbath mark a distinction between God and Satan. Yes. That's why Satan needs to yes. have a counterfeit day because <laughs> the, they gave him the authority or, or the privilege to, to have worship. But you see, when God, God did not make a mistake, let me tell mm -hmm. you, even in the language, God was, was purposeful and deliberate in letting us know that by keeping the Sabbath, it is a shield. Mm -hmm. A shield to protect us against lies, against the enemy, against um, um, everything that the enemy will throw at us. But, but, but it's not only going to be a shield, but it's also a defense, yep. um, a, a, a offense. Yes. It is a defense and also an offense. By keeping the supper, you are connecting yourself to the God of the Sabbath. It means, uh, listen, I, I go in all the way to David. David says that, that thou has anointed my head with oil. Mm -hmm. The concept of anointing, and, and people say, why you go there? But listen to this, you know. The concept of anointing means, um, it's a Hebrew culture. When you go to, to, to the Hebrew home, the owner of the home meets you at the door, and he pours oil on your head, on your and head. you're anointed, and you can come into the home, right? Yes. But the, the beauty about that now is that when the owner anoints you, Mm -hmm. Whenever anybody comes to your house, to, to the, that house for you, mm -hmm. they have to talk to the owner. Right. If they need you, they have to go through the owner mm -hmm. because you are now under the covering or the blessing or the anointing of the owner. Understand this. The Sabbath is the anointing of God to all people who are recognized to him. <laughs> listen, listen, this thing's so big, right? That when you go to God on the Sabbath day, you are saying, Lord, I am coming to your house, anoint me afresh. It mm -hmm. is the Lord's day. And on that day now, if the devil only think about touching you, who do you think he can go through? God himself. Yeah. So God is our offense. And the Sabbath is a shield unto us to help us to hold fast unto God's goodness. And are we, are we just citing two, two texts? And that's why the Sabbath can be said that it was made for man mm -hmm. and not man for the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I, 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 pass, that, pass. That, that's where the word of God gets sweet. <laughs> You see, I see. I'm happy to see that you can you continued that level of passion from school. Yes, I tell you, when you start talking about the word, <laughs> I see how you get passionate fast. Yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah. I but then this text alone, we're on one text, eh? We ain't get to oh. half of the text that we wanted oh. to get. That's one text that we have culminated so part two, much part two, from. Part two. Yeah, yeah. We we need a part two for you, for you, for you. But then we see that. In this one text, this was before Israel and everything was established. So people yes. saying that the Sabbath was made for the Israelites. Went, no, oh man, in a perfect world. This was before sin, you know. For per perfect world, I'm, man. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what sense in a perfect world God mm. created it. Mm. And in an imperfect world, man wanted to destroy it. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> So then th there's an argument that perhaps maybe that sin tainted um, Sabbath in terms of causing it to be holy or um, God didn't want it to be highly regarded because of sin. But then in Exodus and in Deuteronomy, where the Ten Commandments are given, where Moses recorded, records the Ten Commandments, we see that in the heart of the Ten Commandments, remember the Sabbath remember. day to keep it. Why is it remember. that we want to forget remember. what God said to remember? That makes sense. The one command to remember, yes. everybody yes. wants to forget. Now, making sense? But, but pass. Uh -huh. Listen to this here. Tell me. The the the, the, the ten commandments mm -hmm. were divided into two sections. Correct. The first four, which include the Sabbath, mm -hmm. was slated exactly for God. Mm -hmm. Correct. 
love God, don't call his name in vain, no don't idols. worship any idols, mm. and obey the Sabbath. Right. That's four. The last six love towards men. man. Right. Love towards man. Mm -hmm. let, let me tell you something. If God made a mistake, mm -hmm. court, court and court and unquote. Court right. and unquote, that God made a mistake. The mistake is that he forget that he changed the day because of sin. <laughs> Why didn't he change? Thou should covet your, thou should not covet your neighbor wife. Mm -hmm. Why didn't he change? Thou should not murder. Mm -hmm. Why did he change? Thou should not lie. Mm -hmm. Why did he change? Thou should not steal. Why the only thing that man want to change is the Sabbath day. Understand what that is. That's fulfillment of prophecy. But we are reading there yet. Yeah, but yeah. Take the time. <laughs> that 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 the the attack of not keeping the Sabbath or changing the Sabbath is an attack direct from Satan himself. Mm -hmm. Because if we keep the Sabbath, we are, we are without a shadow of a doubt. Whether we love it or not, once we are keeping it, it brings recognition to the creator of the universe. And the devil cannot run from that. Yeah, yeah. I think the issue, well, not that I think, but I know, even at the inception, when this whole sin problem started in heaven, oh gosh, that's a whole different conversation too. <laughs> but but what the enemy wanted was worship pass. Oh. He wanted glory for himself. That that has been the issue from since the beginning, you beginning. know, this whole sin issue that the enemy wants worship. And the Sabbath has to do with worship. It has to yes. do with obedience to God, allegiance to God. And yes. so then, of course, the enemy wanting obedience and allegiance and worship has to make something counterfeit so that he yes. can have worship, so that he can have allegiance. And if we go down prophecy, as we're talking about Mark of the Beast and Seal of God and all that, it boils down to allegiance, worship, this same Sabbath versus Sunday thing. But well, that's that, another conversation. Co <laughs> counterfeit. The devil is so clever with counterfeit. Eh? Mm -hmm. You know, there is the W-O-R-D and mm -hmm. then there is the word and there is the world. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The devil is classified as the world, right? Right. The word is classified as Jesus, right? Correct. What? How does world spell? Spell world for me. W O R L D. Yes. What letter? What letter <laughs> the devil put in? Yeah. The standard because he still wanted the standard of the word mm -hmm. W O R D. So he just put in the L, which is his name. <laughs> I like that. And, and he changed. So his standard now is the world standard. Uh -huh. But what he did, he just stick in one little thing within all of that, uh -huh. just so that he could change it. And what happened? Sunday, it started with an S2. Mm. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It started with an S2. Mm. And guess how close it is to the Sabbath? Mm. Just next door. Right, so, right. So, so that's why people are going to say, it's not, it, no matter what day you serve. Matter of fact, Saturday and Sunday begin with S, so it's all right. <laughs> no, but it, it, it is God that you serve. No, 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 no. <clears throat> Excuse me. You see, the, this Mark 227. Right. It is such a clever text. If mm -hmm. you don't understand it, you're going to miss it. But let, me, mm -hmm. let me throw this in here. Break it down fast. Tell us. The Sabbath was made for man. Mm -hmm. Understand what that, that have there. The Sabbath was made for man, which means that no other day, <laughs> no other day was made for man. Mm. <laughs> understand this here. Without holding on to the Sabbath, Man losing a gift as important. That's why Jesus says he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Listen, this uh -huh. thing is so tied up that you cannot say Jesus changing. Mm -hmm. That's a life on the bottom of hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how deep hell went. Go on. Well, I, I guess, no. <laughs> and we now go find out. <laughs> but understand what I'm saying. Uh huh. When we try to substitute, we are losing the gift mm -hmm. of the Sabbath. And the gift of the Sabbath goes far beyond a day. Mm -hmm. It is now connected to a person. Mm -hmm. And that person 
connected to John 3.16. Amen. Which is connected to the Father of the universe mm -hmm. who now connects himself to the power of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you something. Preach Genesis, Genesis did not forbear that there was not a trinity because mm -hmm. Genesis confirmed that there was a trinity. Mm -hmm. Because listen to this. God says, God says, let there be light. Uh -huh. And Jesus says, I am the light of the hey, world. Okay, pass. Okay. Oh, let, let me bring some <laughs> theology ahead, here ahead, now. <laughs> and the Bible said that the Spirit of God moved on the water. Uh -huh. So God the Father was talking. The light which appeared was Jesus. Uh -huh. And the Spirit that was moving was the Holy Spirit. So the three in one was working even in creation. Uh -huh. So it means that the establishment of the Sabbath still connects the three in one. And if you lose the Sabbath, you are losing the connection of the Trinity, the God, the, the God Father, the God Son, and the God Spirit, because now you're trying to fit it in, in your stead mm -hmm. or the devil's stead mm -hmm. instead of God's stead. Uh, pass, pass, pass. Uh, sorry. Let, 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 me, let me shut down. Go ahead. Go ahead, pass. pass. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pass. <laughs> you see, you, you can't dig up the answers and expect to get some bite in it. Pass. Pass, I tell you, we're, dis we're, we're, we're discussing. We're not preaching, Pass. Oh, Behave God, help yourself. It's right. the word of God, you know. <laughs> but but I, I get the excitement, man. I get the excitement. When I had that same revelation that you you um exclaimed so wonderfully, just to thank you so much, Pass. As I got that revelation as well, oh, the Sabbath and the Trinity are so connected. And if you take away that, you, you're basically dismantling who God is. Man, that was just... You know, before you would think that, okay, keep the Sabbath day because God said so. But then when you recognize that it's so connected to who God is, oh my word. But, 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 pass. We, we, we I can talk about one way. No, I pass. Can one way. <laughs> I can show one way. Pass. pass. One okay. more. Try it, try it, try it, try it. Let, let, let me show it, man. Listen okay, to this. You know, Sabbath is God's Valentine Day. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us. The Sabbath was created for man, right? Right. And it is an act of love that caused creation, right? Uh-huh. And God says, God says, let us make man in our image for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. Because there was, there was love. And how do I know there was love? Because um, John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave us his only begotten son, right? Mm -hmm. So, so listen, listen to this connection here now. Why it is the day of love? Mm -hmm. Because it is, it, it is the day that God recognized that man have to get more than just six days. Mm. Mm. Because, hold on, the Sabbath is God's day. Mm -hmm. But the Sabbath is also a day that God invites us to share with him. Right, right, right. So, so we have six days to work and to do all our, 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 what we need to do, right? Mm -hmm. But still God giving us peace of the seven. <laughs> so it must be an act of love. And let me tell you, if persons like to receive, uh -huh. the Sabbath will be the best gift you can receive because yeah. it is more than just a day. It is a gift of love, of compassion, of grace, of mercy, of connection, of salvation, mm -hmm. of redemption, of everything that mm -hmm. we can imagine because that day is it. Right. But, and I, as you, I, I just remember the title for a, a sermon that I had when I preached on the Sabbath, um, last year when I had my crusade, it was a hot date with God. When I talked on the Sabbath, a hot date with God, because you have a weekly date with God and it's so wonderful. It's so nice to spend that time with God, man. A hot date with God it is. Every week you have a hot date with God. But but we've been focusing on the altar. We just look at two texts, eh? And oh, one thing okay. I want to punch in here. Um, if you're talking about theology, when God gave Moses this um, Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai for, for the Israelites, this came after they came out of Egypt, after God would have delivered them. At that point in time, it stamped an additional meaning or regard for the Sabbath fast. At that yeah. time, we not only saw God as, as creator, but we also saw him as redeemer. He is the one who brought Israel out of Egypt. It is by his power, by his authority, mm -hmm. that the Israelites came out of Egypt. That was synonym, synonymous or pointing to the fact that he is the one 
why we have a, a refuge or why we are redeemed from the bondage of sin. And so at that point in time, as we look at God as creator, he's saying, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, not only because I'm creator, but because I'm your redeemer as well. Oh. And, and, and we're looking at the Old Testament alone and we're seeing the Sabbath in such a, a, a vast way. But you know, some people argue that, okay, the Sabbath was for the Old Testament and whatever, whatever. We jump into the New Testament now. Yes, let's you, go. You, you see the thing about it, the New Testament did not have an issue with the Sabbath. We, we tend to say that, oh, it was an establishing the New Testament again and whatnot. So then that was done away with and whatnot. It wasn't an issue in the first place. If you read Luke 6, you would see mm -hmm. that, if anything, the Pharisees were trying to keep the Sabbath too holy. It wasn't an issue. <laughs> The, that was Luke 6 too holy. <laughs> too holy I put that in brackets too holy <laughs> because they were trying to to add extra laws around the Sabbath you couldn't walk a certain distance on the Sabbath day um, you, you couldn't dress a type of way when you're in the, you couldn't do a lot of things on the Sabbath they were putting a yoke around the people's neck when it came to the Sabbath so if they regarded the day so highly that they thought that in their strength and that's what sin does that you think you have to add to what God has already established to try to that's keep it point. holy all right. But then the Sabbath was not an issue. In Luke 6, you see that um, they were picking the corn as they were going through the, um, the field and they were breaking the Sabbath. And so they, 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 they tried to chastise God. And so it wasn't an issue. Jesus was keeping the Sabbath. As his custom was, he went into the synagogue and he got up and he read. OK, fine. Jesus died. Even after that point, Paul himself was keeping the Sabbath. As you read in Acts chapter 13, you will see that. But I want us to focus a little bit on Mark, Matthew, Matthew chapter five, um, verses 17 and 18. I, I need to ask a question in relate to something that you, you said earlier. Okay. Um, what, what, what really the Sabbath is for? In light of, other than what we have mentioned before, in terms of seeing God What's as creator. What, what is the purpose of the Sabbath? The purpose in of, light the of In light of worship. Mm -hmm. And in light of communion, mm -hmm. what is the Sabbath for? What, what is the reason for the Sabbath? To remember God. And oh, I'm glad you said that. That's why Jesus could pick corn <laughs> and walk and eat. I get that's why point. Jesus could heal a man on yeah. the Sabbath day. Uh -huh. that's, why, that's why Jesus could say it is good to do good on the Sabbath, mm -hmm. because I find that the devil is um, kind of trying to make the Sabbath so hard that mm -hmm. you have to find another way. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, and I think that's where the Sabbath for us can also be a, 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 um, a repellent for people because uh -huh. of how we observe the Sabbath. Mm. And I think that's one of our biggest problems. Because, mm. sab listen, Sabbath morning, if you wake up sad, knock off the sadness off your face. Yeah. Go and dock your head in some cold water. Mm. Go, 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 go do something. Because the Sabbath should not be a day of sadness. Mm. You should be so jolly, so hilarious on the Sabbath day that, that people want to know what's happening. Yeah. And you got to let them know, listen, I'm going to meet my Jesus. I'm going mm -hmm. to meet my God. You understand why it is to go to meet your God? Mm -hmm. As you read the Sabbath is about God. Mm -hmm. And if we understand that concept and teach that concept, it is not a law. Mm -hmm. It is not a, a, a precept. It is not something that we just want to remember. But it is something to know our God. Mm -hmm. And if we hold it for now, then we will see the beauty of the Sabbath day. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, Matthew 5. Matthew 5, yes, Matthew 5. I want to know what God says about his law, all right, which includes the Sabbath as well, right? Yes. The Bible tells us in verse 17 of Matthew chapter 5, Jesus here is speaking, think not, don't even conceive it, don't let it pass your mind, don't, don't, don't allow it, to, to, to even, even, you know, glimpse your mind. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Or the prophets. Or the yeah. prophets. Mm -hmm. I am not come to destroy, but to, but fulfill. to fulfill. 18 says, 
Hold on, let, 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 I know that you're excited. <laughs> 18 says, For verily I say unto you, Jesus speaking here, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle. You see my name in the Bible pass? One ah, jot <laughs> or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, pass, I don't know about you. And if you have ever taken some time to actually delve into this text and to see what Jesus has said here, it goes on to talk about um, um, whosoever therefore shall break one of the... But I just want to focus on these two verses. Eh? This is so powerful. Pass, I see that you're excited, but allow me... The, the, the... Yes, go ahead, go ahead. I, I'm waiting, go ahead, I'm waiting. <laughs> I know there's so much to say, um, but we are running so on a, a little way on, on time. time. Yes. yes. So, so I will try to pick out the, the, the major points that I see in this text, right? Yes. Jesus is saying, don't even think that I have come to destroy any law, to destroy the prophets. And that's a whole different conversation right there, right? I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Jesus himself came to show us what it really meant to keep, to keep the law. How it really, just the example of, of, he came to be an example setter for us. What it really meant to keep the law. Okay, fine. Here's what I want us to focus on. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot, that dot in the Hebrew language or the Greek language, a dot or um, tittle, a crossing over the T, not even a crossing of the T or the dot pass. We're going to pass from God's law. He don't want to take anything from it. He's saying here, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from, from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, I ask myself the question, till heaven and earth pass away. I said, what? So there's coming a time when one jot or one tittle shall pass wise from the law. I, I said, okay, that don't make sense. So then I said, when will heaven and earth pass away? But I said to myself, pass, never. We will have a new heaven. We will have a new earth. But there will always be a heaven. There will always be an earth. In other words, there will never be a time when this law of God, which includes the Sabbath, will ever pass away. If you read Isaiah 66, verse 23, pass, that points to the fact that there will be a Sabbath that we're keeping in heaven, you know. Sabbath is not only, Sabbath was in a perfect world in Genesis. We see it established mm. in Exodus, Deuteronomy, after sin. We see that it was not a problem in the New Testament for Jesus and Paul. The disciples were keeping the Sabbath. And we see that Sabbath will be kept in heaven. Sabbath is here to stay. It is here to stay from now until eternity. So we need to get our lives in order when it comes to this Sabbath business pass. I, I see that you, 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 you want to say something there, pass. Go ahead, talk. I, I, I want to touch on, on uh, that particular fr phrase, till mm -hmm. heaven and earth pass away. Okay, tell us. That alone <laughs> tells you uh -huh. that in no way, mm -hmm. no form, no fashion, mm -hmm. no inclination <laughs> that the Ten Commandments of God mm -hmm. would not change. Correct. And let me let me let me back it up by this. The reason why the Ten Commandments of God will not change, because the Ten Commandments is the standard that heaven stands by. Correct. Angels have to love each other. They don't they they are not they are, they are asked not to covet, mm. not to lie, not mm. to steal. Understand this. Mm -hmm. The angels were keeping these laws before. It was not established just for man, you know. Mm -hmm. This was a, a this these laws are God's governmental laws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It means that all the worlds that have not fall, they are the, they, they are the one who still keep the mm -hmm. ten precepts and the ten laws of God. Uh -huh. Understand this thing uh -huh. here, uh -huh. and, and and they still keep this out, uh -huh. because that's what God is all about. It is mm -hmm. only us who have fallen, mm -hmm. trying to still break the Sabbath, <laughs> and want to tell people that when you go to heaven, then you will keep the Sabbath. <laughs> huh? The thing uh -huh. is, still, heaven and earth shall pass away. The earth gonna the only thing they're gonna pass from earth when Jesus comes is sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And heaven coming down. So matter of fact, heaven and earth will be one. Eh? The new mm -hmm. Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. Coming down to mm -hmm. earth. 
they're going to be won. So they ain't passing no way. <laughs> There's no destruction of heaven. There's no destruction of the earth. The things in the earth that is of sin will be destroyed, but mm. the earth will remain because God is going to make a new heaven. Yes, and a new earth. And a new earth. <laughs> and if God makes a new heaven and a new earth, it means that the law will still stand. Correct. Will heaven and earth passed away. There will always so be heaven. So it means yes. that the Ten Commandments can change. Exactly, man. Because if the Ten Commandments change, God is a liar. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 I leave it there. <laughs> Pass, as you're saying that, some people may seem confused about this, this, this law thing. And I know we're talking about the Sabbath, but as you look at it, because the law is established based on the character of God, you know, the law is established based on God's character. He has a character mm -hmm. of love. Because there's a law, we know that there's sin. If there was no law, yes. there can't be sin. So then that tells me, therefore, that the Ten Commandments were not only established at Mount Sinai. On what basis was Lucifer judged? In heaven, what did Lucifer, Lucifer coveted in heaven, coveted a position that was not his? He had an idol oh, himself. Oh, oh, God's oh, law was established oh, already. Oh, okay, fine. There is we no other God but me. Right, he right. He broke that. And then we come he down lies. on earth. We come down on he earth. Kills. Right. We come, so, come on, so, we can go through it. Yes, but then we see that in Genesis 39, verse 9. Joseph, when he was with Potiphar's wife, before the, the, the commandments were established, you know, he asked himself, oh, yes. how can I do this great sin against my God? How did he know that adultery was a sin against God? The law was established, man. It, was, it wasn't just at Sinai. God has had this perfect law even before man was created. It has always been there and it will always be there. Let's stop yes. trying to fight down God's law. It stands. So, and, and, and my next question, uh, why only this fourth commandment? Yes. Why only? Why only the Sabbath? I mean, why don't you want to change the first or even the tenth? Mm-hmm. Why only the Sabbath day? And, and, and that's our whole discussion. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's the day that God seals his creative power mm -hmm. and his eternal eminence over mm -hmm. all things. So if you remove the Sabbath, you're removing the very foundation and the very principle of who God is is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if you're not keeping the right sabbath you're not serving the right god ha huh. powerful point fast powerful point man our time our time gosh oh, man yes. i really wanted us to touch in on things like change of the sabbath and all but i think we can end on Make that part two please yeah yeah two, we, we might have to do a part two sometime yeah, yeah, we have to do a part two on, on, on this man, man enough to true talk life. And we're speaking the truth. We haven't yeah. told you any heresy. It's not our no. theology. It's not Pastor Shepherd's theology, Pastor Tito. Sure. This is the word of God that is plain as day. God has made it so easy for us to understand his word. It's not complex, man. It's plain as day. And I pray, we pray that God's spirit works with you. As you're hearing this truth, maybe you're hearing it for the first time. Maybe you're hearing it again. But let God's spirit work on your heart even now so that you can live in total obedience. Then what's the big deal versus Sabbath or Sunday? The big deal is that we want to live according to what God wants for us and not based on what man has, has ordained or the enemy has ordained. Understand? We want to live in yes. total commitment and obedience to God. That's the big deal. Obedience and pledging our allegiance to God. Pastor Shepard, I thank you so much for being on, on today's talk, man. I love the passion. I love that we were able to laugh just like back in school and share God's word, man. Mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was so wonderful, man. And I'm looking forward to, to, to future discussions with you, my brother. You know, and, and for those it's of you... It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And for those of you who are viewing today, you know Pastor Shepard's um, show True Talk Live. It will be resuming on the 18th of this month, 18th of February. February and you can find it on the Roso Seven Day Adventist um, page, correct? And they also have a Facebook page that they have now started. You just type in True Talk Live and you should be able to find it on um, 
Facebook as well. And for Man Enough, you just type in Man Enough Dominica, you will find Man Enough here. And as we'll continue to have this um, collab, Man Enough to True Talk Live, we're looking forward to greater and better things. So may God continue to richly bless you as you continue this day. Thank you for joining us on our Man Enough program today. You can feel free to contact us via phone at 767-614-2878. Or you can reach us via email at youaremanenough at gmail.com.